Now we're going to look at the UCS part of the uh, picture here. Now imagine the same setup, instead of your conventional blade server or rack mount server, you have UCS blade chassis. Right? Now, you have your virtual machines, as we talked before, that your virtual machines are on the shared storage. Right? You also have something called UCS service profiles. Now, what is a service profile in UCS? Service profile is basically your logical definition of a blade. How your physical blade is going to look when you power it up. Now, it contains the attributes like the MAC address, what you want the MAC address to be. It contains the WWN of your HBA. It contains the firmware version, what, what you want it to run on. And it also contains the zoning information that the, the MDS on the, D, on the DR side or on the primary side should see this WWN so that it allows the visibility to the volume on the storage. Now having all this in place, you make sure that your profiles are also backed up. And they are stored on a location which is replicated to the DR side. It's not much of a data here because just few KBs, it's just an XML file. Along with these two, you also have your operating systems installed on the physical blade from a SAN volume. It's no longer installed on the local hard drive. It's installed on the SAN volume. So you, your blade is basically just a compute place. It's only used for RAM, network, and your CPU power. But your local hard drives are probably used for disposable storage. That could be your swap space. Your actual OS, which is installed on the blade, is on the SAN storage. Now this is your primary site. You create a DR site, you have your UCS secondary chassis there. You have your replication in place. Now when you have your replication in place, all these three features here are on the shared storage. They are being replicated to the DR site as well. Now what that means is that you have your virtual machine data files, that's your VMDK and the entire virtual machine file being replicated. You also have your service profiles replicated as well. Now which means that what's your blade on the site A was logically defined as the MAC address, the WWN, right? The firmware version, the, the boot policy, everything from here can be taken and applied on a different blade, on a different chassis in the DR site. So this gives you the freedom of not getting your ESX pre-installed here. Because your ESX was installed on your boot volume on the SAN storage, which is also being replicated to the DR site. Now, if you look at the, the logical blade, it was looking at the same SAN volume here. It looks at the same volume here, the contents. So when you power up the service profile, it's going to power up from the same volume. So imagine your ESX01.domain.com was shut down here. It got replicated here, you power it on. The ESX which powers on here is also ESX01. So you no longer have to worry about installing a secondary OS on the DR side. So you have 10 blades here, you have 10 blades there. You're not, inst you're not installing a secondary copy of your OS. It could be your ESX, could be your native Red Hat Linux, or a Windows machine. In this case now, the disaster ha strikes. Now you already have everything up and running here with the help of SRM. So SRM kicks in, it breaks the replication. The moment it breaks the replication, your blades can now see the volumes, right? Because SRM can talk to your storage array. It can make the volumes appear to the blades. Now when that happens, your virtual machines are brought online because your ESX was brought online from the SAN storage. Right? Now in this way, you don't have to have your ESX or your native operating system like Windows or Red Hat pre-installed up and running on the DR site. It can be brought online just by applying the profile from the site A on the site B. Okay? Now you take your secondary site. This is your secondary site. Okay, you can take the secondary site and you can map it to multiple data centers. Now what that means is that your, if your blade is there and your, all the four sites are running up and running just fine, the operations are running on their primary sites, these blades are not doing anything. They're just sitting idle, they're waiting for a disaster to strike on one of the sites so they can be brought online. 
So in this time, you can use these same blades using a different service profile, and you can use them for test and development. You can use them for secondary tasks, which are not so important, which can be shut down in case of a disaster strikes at one of these primary sites. So these can, this part of this uh, DR site can be a DR for multiple primary sites. And this is how you can use this shared DR site for a shared DR multiple across multiple primary sites, or it can be used for test and development on the DR site in case when there is no disaster striking on the primary sites. So this gives you a lot of advantage here because you don't have to protect only your application data. You can protect your OS, which is installed on the SAN storage. You can booting from the SAN, so you can protect your OS as well. You can replicate that. You don't have to install the OS again. You don't have to install a secondary copy of the OS on the DR site and keep it up and running. You don't have to spend twice on the number of licenses because you're, in, you're running only one copy of the OS on either side. You have a quick, robust, and tested way of moving to the DR site with the help of SRM. In SRM, you can do a dry run, how your DR will work if in case you need to execute that plan. You have your scripts in place. You have your policies in place. You can dry run it. So you know if disaster strikes, your plan B will work. It's not a dummy plan. It's not on the fly or how we'll see how it goes. It will work because you've already tested it, right? You have your automated recovery process. SRM is automated, right? It's not fully automated. You have to click a button to make it work. But yes, the rest of the part is automated. It knows what scripts to run. It knows what application to break, which runs to bring online. You can automate your UCS service profiles to be brought online on the secondary side as well using the CLI. You can script that as well. So you can have an automated process, a nearly fully automated process to get your DR up and running in no time. Using your Cisco service profiles, SRM, and your storage replication. Okay. Then you have your increased return over investment by using your secondary site as a shared resource, as a shared DR for multiple primary sites. You don't have to have one DR for each primary. You can have one DR for five primary. I'm just giving a ballpark number five. It's not a static number. But you can have many to one relationship between your primary site and a DR site. And then, not only for the DR, you can use your secondary site for any purpose. You can use it for test and development. You can use it for any offline work you want to do, any low priority task you want to do in your environment. So you can make the best use of your DR site hardware infrastructure which you have already in place while there is no disaster. So this gives you a better return over investment. So now this, this brings to an end of my presentation here because uh, with the DR, based upon the UCS and SRM, you can have better ROI, you can have better management, and you can have better protection of your primary site.